exciting edition of Comics TV, your weekly comic book, trading card, animation, movie, horror, science fiction, and whatever else show. My name is Mike. And I'm Steve. And we're glad you're watching. And now that we're finally on the air, we're trying to keep on schedule with the newest books out on the market. Today's show promises to be very good. If you have your VCRs going, you're in for a treat. If you don't, you're never going to see this again. We're going to run through our top ten Babelicious comic babes. We have an interview with famed inker Joe Sinat. And we'll, we'll be reviewing and previewing the hottest new comics out on market, including the publishers, the, the largest, the smallest, and all the ones in between. Okay, we've changed our rating system just a bit because we had five stars as of last week, but we felt that was just a little too confusing, so we've narrowed it down. If a comic is, it's going to be a three rating system. It's either good, bad, or ugly like him. And, well, we'll give you a little story between, behind each of them, the price, and if you think you should buy it or shouldn't buy it. Good shot. Thanks. Okay, we're going to start something new. We've got a little comic news, and uh, we'll start this right now. Iguana Comics is one of the new kids on the block, an imprint of RIP off presses that they blew, debuted Bloodseekers. All right. Uh, due to be released in August is The Crow Collected from Kitchen Sink News. It's 200 pages of previously re released material and it's compiled in a graphic novel. Some of you may know The Crow as it was the last movie that uh, Brandon Lee was working on before he was mysteriously shot. It's a shame that had happened. It's terrible. DC is releasing The Extremist, a unique book that mixes adult sexual themes uh -huh. Superheroes and an interesting storyline. Sounds like it's something I'll be reviewing. Probably. Another company entering the market is Lightning News, which debuts Bloodfire, a story which has a, um, a sh soldier which is infected with the HIV virus, and he becomes a superhero. It's going to be kind of interesting. It looks like it could be good. How does that happen? He's uh, injected by a mad uh, scientist who's trying to create the perfect uh, soldier. What is that called? And lastly today, Malibu Comics has a new miniseries ready for release. Real Comics will be a four-issue series, with the fifth and final issue being a collectible video. Ooh, that should be fun. Sounds cool. Can't wait to see that. We'll keep you up to date. I've got a few last-minute uh, comic news that I'm going to run through really quick. This I got off of some local BBSs. Uh, Judge Dredd, there's a movie slated for a 94 release at Christmas time, and Sylvester Stallone is supposed to be in the starring role. Speed Racer, which I can't stand one bit at <laughs> all. <can> I. <laughs> uh, there's 13 new episodes being made by the, in production from the same company that did the last crappy ones, I guess. Uh, the Mask is coming to the big screen. Cool. Chuck Russell from uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and The Blob is supposed to be directing. Cool. And The Tick is being produced for Fox. Uh, that's news that we have. We didn't have that before. And there's a new line of action figures from Cal and Kenner. Uh, based on the Alien series. Ooh, and last favorite. but not least, we've got some information that Action Comics number 690 will, will, uh, will debut the return of the one and only original Superman. The original? The original. So the, they're bringing him back to life? He's coming back, and we told you first. Ooh, there we go. You've seen it on Comics TV. That's right. Okay. Now we'll start our reviews. Start with him. And welcome again, because I am doing my alternative reviews now. Uh, this My first book this week is Madman Adventures 3 from Tundra Press. This is by Mike Allred and most likely his wife, Laura Allred. This is definitely a book you must read when you're fully awake. I tried reading this when I was half asleep and I was bored to death. Uh, the next day I read the whole thing when I was wide awake and I found it quite interesting. It was pretty good. Not quite sure what this Madman storyline is about, but it has Dr. Boy Fired, Frank the Madman, and Dr. Flem all involved in this story. Yes, that Dr. Dr. Flum. In this story, they go camping. Frank finds an alien who directs him to find another alien who's been stuck on Earth for 2,000 years, and they want to send him home. It's funny, a bit philosophical, and it's good. It's 48 pages, no ads, coated stock paper, costs $2.95. For that alone, it's worth trying, but I give it a good rating, so try it. Anyways, okay, for my, I don't know if I can top that rating, for my top rating, for my number one, Man of War number one, Dan Danko, Tom Mason, our writers, Brian Lee Penciler, and Imar Ribeiro, Inker. Yeah. Yes, Imar. This one starts with a telekinetic named Lip getting into trouble with the Protectors. And the Protectors sending Man of War to try and recruit Lift to become one of the Protectors. 
What Man of War doesn't know is the government wants Lyft dead. With special guest the Ferret and Man of War's trusty tooth sword, will he and Ferret succeed? This one's from Malibu Press, sells for $2.50, and I gave it a good re rating just because, well, there was a lot of action in it. So, I definitely gave it a good rating. Good the boy. Good the boy. Okay, my next book this week is The Stranger Number One, the Ultraverse series from Malibu. I've been uh, reading a lot of re reviews about these uh, first few weeks of the Ultraverse series, and it seems like a lot of people think that there's something lacking in the storylines, whether it's it's action, which I don't know if it's about action, but the writers claim that they tried to jam as much into one issue as possible. This one was pretty good. I picked it as a review or a preview a few weeks back, and I thought it was good. It's got a couple babes in the story, as they usually do. Uh, the story is about 59 strangers stuck in a cable car in San Francisco. It gets struck by lightning, and uh, a few of them develop powers. Some of them are going to be bad. Some of them are good. It's 30 page book. It has 8 pages of ads. It gives us 22 pages of story. Cost Yes, cost duck, duck 95, yes, a dollar 95, and it's worth reading a few issues just to see if it's any good. Mallard 95. Malibu. <laughs> Malibu. 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 <laughs> okay, for my second book, Avengers West Coast, number 98. Roy Thomas Reuter, David Ross Penciler, and Tim Dizon Inker. A new villain force by the name of Lethal Dijon. Dijon Lethal Legion, which consists of Cold Steel, Cyana, Axe of Violence, Zycon, and the Hangman, <clears throat> were created by Satanish to specifically destroy the Avengers West Coast. With all the problems that the Avengers are having now, it might be difficult it might be not as difficult as you think to destroy them. They start with US Agent, and they really beat this guy up bad. <clears throat> But will they succeed? You're going to have to buy the book to find out. It sells for $1.25, and I gave it a good rating. Excellent. I, I just want to say one thing to people. If our sound is bad this week, we had to use um, different mics, and hopefully next week we'll be set up with our, our regular system, because that bothers me. But we still look as good. Always. Okay, my third book and last major book this week is Joe Matt's Peep Show. This is by Joe Matt. He's uh, out of Toronto, Ontario. It's black and white, costs two fifty. Uh, he puts out a couple, three, four issues a year from Drawn and Quarterly in Montreal. This comic is great. It's Joe's life, his diary, everything in comic book form. Every person he meets, every woman he meets, it's all in there. He goes back and forth um, with all the problems that everybody has in life. Uh, I thought it was really good. Would recommend it to adult readers since there is nudity and uh, quite a bit of swearing. Yes, there is nudity. <gasps> Go get it if you're an adult. Oh, okay. Okay, for my third book, I picked Blood Syndicate number five. Ivan Vesler Jr. is the writer, John Lowe is the anchor, and yes, Chris Cross is the penciler. <laughs> and the name of this one is Hasta La Vista Tech Nine. All right. As Blood Syndicate is paying their last respects to Tech Nine, somebody is trying to kill them. With talking rats, talking dogs, I feel this series is the best title of the Milestone imprints out there. Compared to Icon and Static, uh, I'd say that it's definitely a viable one. It sells for a dollar and a fifty, and I give it a great rating. A dollar and a fifty. A dollar and a fifty. One a dollar and a fifty cents. <laughs> I give it a great rating. Go out and buy. It. Okay, I've got a new, or we've got a new, uh, a new thing we're going to do this week. Uh, we're going to try it, see how well it works. We're going to whip through a whole bunch of books that we read. We're not going to have time to go through them all. It's detail so we're going to do this really quickly i'm going to do mine then steve's going to do his let's try this he's got more than me uh, okay we're going to try something different this week we're going to rattle off a whole bunch of books in consecutive order as fast as possible because we read too many books okay my first one this week is sandman number 50 from dc vertigo good book supposed to be one of the few that most women like reading Next, Mr. T T4 is number one from now. New stand edition. Neil Adams and company have produced a good book that should appeal to kids, and it has morals. Next, Conservation Corps number one from Archie Comics. Definitely for kids. A bunch of superhero animals will hopefully teach kids about conservation. It's pretty good. Then we have Spawn number 10 by Todd McFarlane and Dave Sim. Great McFarlane art. Cerebus guest spot. Good story, but no continuing from issue to issue. Then we have... ElfQuest, Hidden Years number one from Warp Graphics. The first color ElfQuest monthly from the PAs came out last year, but it's quality ElfQuest at its best. Dark Horse is continuing saga. Comics Greatest World, week three. This is Ghost, 16-page coded stock book. Pretty good, but the story has more X than Ghost in it. Guess you have to read the whole story. 
Metamorpho from DC. Graham Nolan and company. Oh, Mark Wade. Great story and art. Go get it now. Skin graph number two of four from Vertigo. Excellent story. Good art. Um, if you like tattoos, it's good. See, we have tattoos. We like it. Uh, next. Tank girl number one of four from Dark Horse. It's black and white. As they say, it's a comic for the post litter generation. Sucks. Don't waste your time unless you fit that post litter description. And last but not least, this is from Magnum Comics here in Buffalo. Who I'm not going to say anything about them right now. It'll come up later. Um, this is Mickey Mantle number two. It's pretty good. It's by Joe. It's got Joe Sina and uh, Joe Arsak in art. It's great. Okay, for me, I'll start out with Captain Stern number one. Anybody seen the heavy metal movie? Awesome. Follows the same book. Second one, Dragon vs. Megaton Man. This is very good. Sort of entertaining, but eh, unless you're a savage dragon collector, forget it. Third one, Meteor Man. Meteor Man was really good. It's coming out as a movie coming out uh, blah, 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 come September. Definitely buy this one. Deathmate, first big crossover this summer. It's going to be the year's greatest crossover. Very confusing, though. Unless you follow it, forget it. Last one for me, Daredevil. Very confusing. Don't bother. I have no idea what the hell it's talking about. Okay, those are mine. All right. I like that. Me too. They were pretty good. Yeah. Okay, and our last we review, the review this week is going to be a continuing thing we're going to do for every week until we're finished. We're going to try and go over every comic book magazine, um, weekly or whatever there's out there that's on comic books itself. First one we got is Wizard, and Steve is going to talk okay, about Okay, I'm going to start out with Wizard. If anyone has ever opened up a Wizard magazine, you know it's very educational and very interesting. Yes, it is. This magazine has a lot of information on comics, toys, cards, and comic book paraphernalia. It has a price guide and order forms for different things inside the book. Yeah, for just about everything. The artwork is phenomenal. It also focuses on one specific artist every month, telling you his secrets and uh, things that are coming in the up and coming months. I consider Wizard to be one of the best informational books out there. Definitely go out and buy it. Next week, I'm going to review Hero Magazine. Oh, and remember, prices in the price guide do change weekly, so don't rely so much on that. Go to your comic book dealers and find out what they think. All right. Yay. Cool. Cool. Okay, next we're going to give a little show news for the upcoming shows in the western New York area. Uh, coming up, or still continuing, is the Star Trek convention, which uh, Steve attended and didn't think it was that good. Uh, this goes at the Science Museum until August 31st. Okay, the second Wednesday of every month, uh, the Knights of St. John in Union Williams Streets in Chicktawaga holds a card and comic book show. Possibly one of the biggest shows to hit the area will be on September 18th and 19th at the Erie County Fairgrounds. Okay, you have to carefully check what these shows are about because it appears that many of the shows are more cards than comics. If you have a show you'd like to have mentioned or brought up, or general comments, suggestions, questions, etc., write to Comics TV at this address on your screen now. Okay. That's good. Okay. <laughs> We're getting better, aren't we? Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, it's time for mm. what everybody's been waiting for. Actually, we're probably the only ones that have been waiting for this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is our top ten Babylicious comic babes. Uh, we chose these based upon what looked best, and that was it. Nothing else. Uh, I picked five. Steve picked five. Actually, there's there's top ten, but number none of them are number one. Uh, they're all number one in our hearts. Yes. Okay, we're gonna go with um, first. Is going to be. Uh, let's see. This is the Dirty Pair. Uh, who's this from? This is from Dark Horse. They look good in their little hot metal bikinis here that they have. And uh, we're hoping that uh, they're around for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, next is the one and only Veronica. She's been around forever. Look at that perfect dive and look at that perfect body. After all these years, she still looks good. Looks good to me. Uh, Evil Ernie's little love mate here looks very good in this uh, little picture here. This is Lady Death, and uh, she's tasty. We would like to, uh, never mind. Uh, next, my second last one is a special pinup from the Unblood, the Unblood Strike Pile. This is Glory. She's a member of the Allies, and she is glorious. And last but not least, my one and only favorite lovable, tasty comic book babe is Vampirilla. She is from Harris Comics, and look at that picture inside. That is an amazing profile. Wow. Speaking of profiles, here's Steve. My turn. Okay, for mine, uh, number five, I'm going with 
Silver Sable. Mmm, never knew white hair could look so good on a babe. She's definitely a top babe with me. For my fourth one, I'm going with Jean Grey. Boy, she can get telekinetic with me anytime she wants. She can make me do anything <laughs> she wants to do. Okay. For my next one, I'm going to go with, oh, yes, here we go, Mary Jane Watson Parker. Yes, anybody who followed Spider-Man, yes, they know it. Woody's all out of this, babe. She's hot. Woody. Yahoo. And uh, Steve is picking all of his choices out of, out of Marvel Swimsuit Issue. Marvel Swimsuit Issue. Yes, go out and buy it. Okay, for my next pick, I am going with... Hmm... Purple Passion. Persuasion. Is this a purple Cindy Crawford or what? Tell me what. Let me take a look at that, Mike. What do you That's think? That's Cindy with... That's Cindy. She's Cindy and she's purple. Okay, and for my last one, I'm going with Medusa. Yeah, she could tie me up with her red hair anytime she'd like. So those are my top five babes. And those are your top five babes. That was fun. That was I guess, fun. I guess that'll work. Um, let's see. Okay, we're going to do our up and coming. Up and previews. comings. Um, Steve, you can go first. Okay. Uh, for my first preview, I choose Kill Power, the early years, number three. Kill Power is tacked by branches, brutal lackeys. Don't ask me, I have no idea. <laughs> the Punisher gives them a hand in knocking them out. Then Kill Power and Catapulted is catapulted, bleh, excuse me, into the far future with Genity, where they are ambushed by a raging herd of mutants. Now that sounds like a blood, good, good blood and gut score story. Shipping date is September 30th, and it's $1.75. Steve, how do you like my new haircut? I like your new haircut. How do you like mine, by the way? I have no hair left. He's got a little I'm bit. A little, little bit, bit involved. Okay. okay. My first one this week is, uh, let's see. I dug far and deep for this one, and I don't know what it is. Oh, this is Donna Matrix. Whoa, stick man. Stick man is back. Special appearances. Uh, this is Donna Matrix number one from Digital Comics. The entire book was done with advanced computer 3D rendering. It is, uh, it looks pretty awesome. Pictures are awesome. They look like photographs. It's something that uh, everybody should take a look at. It's done by Mike Sayanez. I believe that's how you say his name. Sayanez. Something like that. He did the original Shatter computerized comic book. He did De Batman Digital Justice and Iron Man Crash. So if you've seen any of those, you know what he can do, and it's gotten even better. The story is about a hacker who reprograms a pleasure droid with the intelligence of a tactical fighter. The droid escapes. All hell breaks loose in 21st century Chicago. It's highly recommended by me, of course. It's probably written more towards the adult end, but the art would be worthwhile for anyone to see. It's $2.95 full color and out in August. Soon. All right. For my next one, I go up Morbius number 15. Ghost Rider is sent to torch Morbius. Then thanks to Lilith, not Fraser's Lilith, the vampire, loses control of his inner demons and embarks in a bloodletting frenzy. And he must be stopped by Werewolf by Night and Meriton. Also makes appearances, and Morbius develops a love interest or two. Sounds really interesting. It sells for $1.25, and it's September 23rd. Don't you have an animal named Morbius? I've got a guinea pig named Morbius, which will be showing up on an up-and-coming show. Excellent. Okay, my second one this week is from Revolutionary Comics, the guys who bring you all the metal comics. <laughs> this one looks very interesting. It's uh, Marilyn Monroe, Suicide or Murder, number one. She was killed. This book reveals shocking facts. It names names and goes further into the mystery of her death than anything written before, as has been said many times. Sounds like it's blowing the lid off of many, wow. many, many secret okay. information. It's many. black and white, 250. It's out in August, if it ever gets out, and it'll probably sell out fast. So reserve your copy now. Hell yeah. Okay, for my third one, it's Superman: Man of Steel number 27, which is, I feel, the best Superman series right now. All right, the creature known as Bloodthirst returns, and this time he intends to suck Metropolis dry, unless Superman can stop him. Uh, shipping date is September 16th, and it's $1.50, and reserve your copy now, too. Do it. Lastly, this week is Antibuse, number three from High Drive Publications. All these comics deal with real people and real stories, so they are interesting, and they usually are geared towards adults. Wait till you hear what's in this issue has three different stories, including a young man's life story about driving a taxi through the crack-soaked streets of Portland, Oregon. That sounds interesting. Oregon's got crack? I don't know. Oh. Uh, the second story is a no-holds-barred story of a woman's frustration with sex. And lastly is a story about a man with cerebral palsy's involvement in the sex trade industry. This sounds cool. All this stuff sounds good. It's three bucks, black and white, out in August. 
And a quickie that I'd just like to throw in is the Caliber Starter Set. Ten caliber titles like Dead World, Baker Street, more, one limited print, and as if that wasn't enough, one trading card. Ooh. All for $12.95. It's over 50% off cover price, and it's a good way to check out a bunch of caliber titles at one time. It's probably out in August also. Trading card, huh? Trading cards? Speaking of trading Speaking cards. Speaking of trading cards, yes, we're going to start. Okay, this week I'd like to show something. Yes, you can go to your comic book shops and, produce, and purchase Wizard Comic Book Binder, which is very good. Hardcover, plastic coating. This week I'm reviewing, yes, Death Watch 2000 cards, which you can see in my little slabs. Okay, the Death Watch 2000 cards, right here, which I'm being focused on, I found them uh, highly entertaining, basically. They're just like the other Marvel series, but they seem they're like they're more graphic. There's uh, better pictures on them. Any violence? And, yeah, a lot of violence. Excellent. Right up his alley. Um, they're, they're high gloss. They're better stamped. I believe there's 180 cards in the series, so I guess you're going to have to buy a whole box to get the whole set. Or just go to your comic book shop and buy the whole set. There's uh, prism cards and hologram cards, which I haven't gotten any yet. But as you can see also, I also put them in these kind of sheets in the binder, which you can fit probably two or three full complete sets inside of here. So I would definitely recommend going and buying, if you're going to buy a lot of cards, Gumming and buying your comic book binders just like this. And as you can see, they have superheroes on the front, and it says comic book binder by Pro Guide. And I would definitely get it. Excellent. 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 Okay, and we're going to finish up our fall cartoon lineup with uh, CBS this week. Starting September 18th is a, a new show card, Marsa Palami. Excellent. An all new, and then an all new Dennis the Menace. Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, and Beaksman's World. Now what we hope you've been waiting for is our wonderful interview with Joe Sinat. We caught up with Joe at a recent show, and um, he proved to be very interesting, and he's, he's history. He's history in the comic book world, and we hope you enjoy this. Yeah, some nice pages here. I gotta ask you, I mean, you know, did, did you ever meet Jack too much? Oh, or yeah. did you hang uh, around uh, much? No, or? really. I never met him, would you believe this, until uh, 1975. Good, you? Really? Because, you know, uh, I lived 100 miles north of the city, mm -hmm. up in Hudson Valley. Mm -hmm. But I, I disliked the city so much, that, you know, the hassle and everything, that I didn't go down to the city. I was two hours away from Marvel's offices. I didn't go down there for 26 years. They didn't see me for 26 years. Can you imagine that? So when I, I did all those FFs with Jack, and Marvel had a convention, 75 and 76, and that was the first time I met Jack, and I don't think I've seen him since. Now, I, I was wondering, uh, when he came back to Marvel, he did a few things. You did a few things yeah. with him, but uh, they kept putting him with the I know. same inkers they had at DC, yeah. which I thought was really Well, when he, when he came back, his stuff wasn't the same, at least as far as I was concerned. Well, even by his own admission, he says, look, you know, I was... I wasn't even trying. I don't think the enthusiasm. No, no, no. no the creativity was like, oh, in the air. The, the stuff he had with the FF. Good idea. You know? Makes sense. Well, you know, everybody <laughs> knows the great imagination he had. I still think you're his best inker. Joe, are you selling sketches today? I don't think I'm, I'm going to go through my thing and see what I have, you know. What are they going for? I don't know. I just might like drag them out. My, mine, uh, usually I pay you guys when I get them. <laughs> <laughs> my God. <laughs> what? It's the, it's the weight of the line that gives out that anchor. Uh, you know, this separates some of the anchors from other anchors. Right. And that, I think that's what helped Kirby's art, because he had bold stuff. And it had to be fairly heavy, but you had there was space, uh, spots, the places there were things that had to be delicate. Yeah. And, uh, you you know, still needed some fine lines. Exactly. But, I, but I, I, I could do that, you know, I could do both. I know. I know. I know. Great interview, wasn't it? We enjoyed it. Very much so. Okay, and that's about all the time we have for this week. Tune in next week when we show a feature on the Star Trek exhibit, if we can get in there at the Science Museum. We have an interview with detective comics artist and Bane designer Graham Nolan, which we hope you'll enjoy. We catch up with this week's happening in this comics world. Okay, please write if you have any comments, suggestions, uh, editorials, anything that you want mentioned on our show, which yes. we will put on. And? And definitely, don't forget to read your comics when you buy them. Yes, read Don't them. just throw them on a shelf. Read them. They're not just for collecting, and they're not just for kids. So, when you patronize, patronize your local television shop, tell them you saw television. it on... 
How about comics? Comics. <laughs> tell them where. Tell them <laughs> when you patronize your local shop. Tell them you've seen it on Comics TV. See you next, See you week. next week. Peace. to do anymore.